Well, hello, thank you for clicking in. This is the vintage jewelry haul slash preview for this week's auctions that are on Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. All of this vintage jewelry will be in the auctions. I'll be going through it piece by piece. And it comes from a very special collection my new jewelry friend, he has been hoarding vintage jewelry for 35 years and not wearing it. And he has exquisite taste and has found some remarkable, extraordinary pieces. I'm starting with the best first. Here it is right here. It is this old case which upon first glance looks like salesman's sample. But when you open it, you will find early half finished Miriam Haskell designs. These are working designs of very, very early Miriam Haskell jewelry before she had a team, early, early working designs with Ephemeria underneath, which is a collection of jewelry inspiration photographs from the time period. Two letters dated 1934 and a pencil drawing of one of these pieces. So this is the very first thing in the auction. And this is just a taste of what is to come. So buckle your seatbelt. This is going to be an extraordinary, extraordinary collection. This is the next piece. This is Christian Dior, Germany dated 1989 with the fringe and the pearl and crystal embellishment on the swags. It is clearly marked. This is an extraordinary piece to add to any uh, serious collection or important collection. And the pieces are not in the order that they will appear in the auctions. I'm just doing my favorites first because it's an extraordinary preview tonight. So this one will be in this week's auction. This, this is 1980s Panetta with large ruby colored crystals, pave crystals, black enamel. This is after Bulgare push in clasp, most likely gold over silver. I will be testing it. Here it is in the back. This is another extraordinary piece out of the um, this man's collection. We have, as he kept them in this box, three pieces of Miriam Haskell jewelry the star, the gold floral, look at the height on that, the rose monties, with, I believe, en tremblant dragonflies. We have this, this is signed R. Serben. It is a crown over a crest or starburst shape with beautiful uh, kind of pinky green blue Aurora Borealis stones. It is signed. We have these beautiful things in their box from Grampy and Laura to Caroline. These are pink 
Cubed Shaped Crystals by Christina. This beautiful bracelet is made by Leo Glass out of sterling and amethyst glass. This is war period because it is made out of sterling. It does have the Leo Glass hallmark here and it is solid sterling silver. So most likely from the silver rations to conserve pot metal during duration of World War II and it is in the Etruscan style and it is heavy, heavy sterling. One of my personal favorites, this is a very hard to find piece. This looks like Old Hobe. It is signed original by Robert. That is how it's pronounced. It is a pin, but if you are lucky enough to have the necklaces or bracelets that fit in here, these box clasps, you can then add it to, I believe they were strands of pearls um, and you could then wear it as the centerpiece of the necklace or of the bracelet, but it is perfectly usable as a pin and it is signed. The Weiss Everyone Wants this beautiful three-dimensional daisy with the lavender stones in perfect condition and also signed. The Victorian gold, I believe this is an Uncas bracelet. It does have the hallmark of the two arrows facing each other with a heart in between, which I don't remember is Uncas or not, but I know the two arrows facing each other are so that is quite interesting. I will know more about this when auction time comes. There is a patent mark here and it is beautiful old gold. This has an important signature. You can see the Viking form here very clearly. This is signed Eric Denung, Denmark, and it is heavy, solid, sterling, silver, from the Scandinavian school. The Hattie Carnegie rhinestone bracelet. Beautiful old emerald cuts and three dimensional with safety clasp and rhodium plating intact. Original Art Deco pot metal bracelet with large crystal centerpiece. This does have some missing stones, but for its age, it does not detract. It is rhodium plating over pot metal, and it is very, very beautiful. There are even stones on the hinged tongue of the box clasp. An Art Deco sterling and emerald cut blue glass, uh, wonderful ring. This is marked sterling, and it does have detail on one side and not the other. Another one of my favorites, this is Kramer, New York. This is opaline glass in filigree with pearls and AB rhinestones. The safety chain is intact. It is in wonderful, wonderful condition. This is a real find. The Mexican alpaca mask bracelet with green glass. This is lovely. A wonderful find in this condition. Look at the details on the leaves on the side of this pendant. This is very, very special. This is in the style of a ring, but it is a pendant. It was made to be that way, and it has a giant cat's eye quartz. And again, I just love the way that looks. When it hangs, this is the front and this is about the bottom. So it's almost like the tongue pendants and it's very hefty and substantial. The sterling silver and hematite saddle ring, a wonderful, simple, elegant ring to keep or to give. The MMA locust brose, <laughs> locust brooch. I love the size of this one. This is a wonderful find. 
to have one of these today in such good shape is a remarkable thing. But again, hoarded for 35 years. The Native American sterling and turquoise cuff bracelet. This is an oldie, this is a good one. This is so wonderful. If you look closely at this motif, these are flying insects. This is unsigned. This is heavy sterling silver with some age to it. It's very thick and solid and it is very old. And here, see the antenna? This is very special. An old, old piece of hand done sterling. This is very special. This has a hook clasp that goes straight into the link. It is just marked sterling and nothing else. And I love how it's a floral, but also could be a scarab. And it reminds me so much of Jensen. The sterling silver wavy flow cuff. This is very mid-century, uh, clearly a studio piece and just great to wear. Look at the clasp on this chain. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. It's like a, a key and a lock. This has to turn to come out of this clasp. It is a watch fob chain and hanging from it is this very finely formed string instrument, which is solid and highly detailed. Look at the bow on the back. Very, very exceptional little piece of men's jewelry. A more contemporary but yet vintage 925 sterling elongated link bracelet. A wonderful present again. Very, very nice to combine with other bracelets. And it is sturdy and chunky and solid, which can be worn with this this is a gold over silver CZ bracelet with uh, channel set links and uh, alternating X links, box class with two um, figure eight safety clasps. Beautiful on the other side as well. One of my very favorites from his collection. This looks so much like Hobe to me. Look at how the stones radiate when you do this along these lines. This is pink and purple and green and clear. And here's the reverse. Look at how smooth this is. This is wonderful. And it also reminds me of a scarab in some way. But I do have scarabs on the brain. This one is a rare hallmark. This is Pochi Designs. There's the mark right there. And these are multicolored crystals. Very, very finely made. This is a beautiful piece from the 1980s. Really, really well made. The Native American Sterling Silver. This is a solid spirit animal charm or pendant. And it's very beautifully made. Oops, I just realized this was not in the Haskell box. I'm going to put that in now. There it is. Okay. These are wonderful, wonderful 1980s Bellinis. Look how beautiful these are with the prong set crystal overlays or CZ on the blue glass. Really delightful. Looks like a Weiss, but you can say for sure. It's oriented like this. This is black rhinestone on a japanned back. Unsigned. Could also be Regency, but is definitely the quality of uh, one of the higher companies and is most likely unsigned Weiss or Regency. The Amethyst and Sterling gold over sterling cross on a gold chain. 
This is wonderful. These are really pretty amethyst. This is a beautiful cross. Okay, and it's in its original gift box and the gold chain is really nice. The Sterling Electroform Bat Ami Israel Bow. I really like the patina on this. I am tempted not to polish it. I will upon request, but look at that. How great is this? And it does have the um, jump rings so that it can be worn as a pendant as well. This, my friends, turned out to be St. John. It is very, very beautiful quality. Uh, nothing beats the 24 karat gold that St. John uses. This looks like real jewelry. Here it is in the back. Here is the signature. That's coming up Wednesday and Friday at seven. This is lovely, this little Micropave CZ. If you wanna make sure you don't miss the auction, you can subscribe and click the bell if you haven't already, or you can text me at the number down here, right down here, 917-809-7250, and you'll get free alerts when I go live with a sale or an auction. These are stunning. These are really good ones. And they are the silver lining micro pave. Lovely little gift. We have this one, this will fool you. Look Scandinavian. It is actually Mexican sterling. Gorgeous, gorgeous design on that one. Sterling silver basket weave ring. Floral copper with almost heart-shaped leaves and a, a turquoise stone. Looks like bell copper. Very, very pretty. Lovely dimensionality on that. This beautiful necklace with the large green stone. <laughs> it's almost a fob style. It's very intricate here. Uh, there is some two-tone metal and then the handmade green crystal and filigree beads with the sterling clasp. So this is quite lovely. And this one is coming up as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the auction. Bye.